I want to digress just for a second. So, so Glenn, can can you you know for you know for our audience in terms of sort of recommendations as it relates to radiation therapy and androgen deprivation therapy? Where do we stand right now with that in terms of the length of androgen deprivation therapy? two years, six months, 18 months, 36 months, where do we stand with all that right now? What we're learning is that less is more. It's better to give less because these are not benign drugs. You know, when I speak to a patient that's got a Gleason score 8, 9, 10, and tell them, look, you know, you need to have neoadjuvant and then concurrent and then future uh, androgen suppression, you have to understand what it does, what the benefits are, but you also have to understand the impact on your quality of life. And these are really metabolic effects that most patients don't really anticipate. So besides the sexual side effects, there's a tremendous effect on the bone metabolism. They lose muscle mass. Um, there's a change in the insulin resistance. There are debatable papers both ways, whether cardiac issues, perhaps dementia. So if we can give less, it's better. I mean, the initial BOLA trial gave three years. Uh, Jerry Hanks repeated that. It was two years. And we're seeing now that we're, we're ratcheting it down. So. I personally, in my practice, patients that are at the highest risk, at least in score 9, 10, we keep them on for two years. Um, if it's less than that, we'll do you know, probably 18 months. Um, if there's a compelling reason to give someone with least in score 7 androgen depression, which I'm not convinced there is, I would make sure it's much less than that. These are not benign drugs. I think when you add androgen suppression to radiation, there's a tremendous impact on the quality of life. What's the data on the use of androgen deprivation therapy in radiation for patients who have who need adjuvant therapy because of high, uh, basically a high grade uh, tumor pathologic stage T3, especially T3C. Sure, that's recently changed. You know, the publication of the RTOG uh, study um, really showed us, and this is always a question. We know that adding androgen suppression to external beam therapy works when your prostate is intact. Does it work in a post-op setting? And we just didn't know. But now we do have the data that the 10, 12 year survival data is better. Again, how long should it be given? The trial gave it for two years. Does that mean that we should be doing? I'm not convinced of that. I think we're going to probably ratchet it down. But there's pretty clear evidence that patients that either have a biochemical recurrence or are very high risk for that, when you treat the prostate fossa, you do need to add androgen suppression. And wasn't there also a trial where they gave uh, concomitant? With the, with the radiation therapy, instead of going full-blown ADT, they used uh, basically bicalutamide. Sure, absolutely. 